Get ready for the Girls on Games podcast, your weekly dose of news, reviews, and everything video games. Always served with a good helping of hype and just a pinch of salt. And now, your host, Leah. Welcome to another Girls on Games podcast. My name is Leah. I'm the host of this show. This is episode 410. I was talking to the girls earlier and I was like, how are we 10 past 400? Where is time going? It is now August. I cannot believe this. This year's flying by, isn't it? Indeed. And so many games coming soon. Yes. So many games uh, on uh, on the docket <laughs> this week. We've got uh, stories about Nintendo's next console. Um, some more follow up on the Microsoft Activision acquisition, and uh, also some uh, famous faces coming to Call of Duty. But before we get into that, let me introduce you to the friendly voices around this digital table. Catherine, how you doing? Good yourself. I'm excellent. Joelle, what's up? Hello, hello. Hello. Not, just trying to keep it cool and uh, keep it fly. <laughs> nice. Uh, uh, wish Simon well. He's dealing with a, a migraine today. I understand that. The uh, barometer has been changing so much. We've gone through heat wave and now it's cool here in Toronto. I think Montreal is exper- experiencing something similar. So uh, it's very yeah. cool. And today has been like raining on and off. I was out for 20 minutes, out of the house for 20 minutes today, and mm-hmm. it was an absolute downpour for that exact 20 minutes. Mm. Mm. Murphy's Law, right? Yeah. And right, right now, side, like, rain comes. Exactly. And right now, it's like 18 degrees Celsius, which is pretty cool for July. Like, not yeah. gonna lie, mm-hmm. this is, uh, I should be sweating. It's breezy. It's uh, Oceaga weekend this weekend, so I hope it's gonna be nice out. It should be, but it's gonna be. Cool I mean, is nice. I know my crew is going to be uh, happy if they're not uh, sweating their buns off. Yeah, it's going to be like 26, 27, cloudy, Perfect. showers in and out. Ooh, they better bring the rain jackets. <laughs> so just enough for it to be muddy yeah. all fucking weekend long. <laughs> All right, let's get through the housekeeping before we get into the crew check-in. I'd like to remind you that if you enjoy this show, you can subscribe. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Spotify, and Podbean. If you'd like to get some GOG merch, you can do that by going to designbyhumans.com slash shop slash girls on games. Maybe you'd like to give us a tip, maybe buy us a coffee. You can do that by going to Kofi. That's ko-fi.com slash girls on games. Catherine, what have you been at this week, girl? Uh, what have I been at? I've just been kind of like hanging out, really. Nice. Um, and chilling like a villain. We were talking about the rain. Mm-hmm. As soon as I started to barbecue yesterday, it started raining as well. Uh, the <laughs> last five times I've barbecued, sudden downpour. So uh, I'm officially retiring as a grill person, grilling mm. person. My barbecue career is over. Uh, fuck this. <laughs> Does Pascal grill? Because usually Mike's the one who mans the grill. He on used our, to. Our he used to be our yeah. designated griller. Um, and when we got the new uh coal grill, I learned how to use it, and now I'm I, I grill. Um, but, but yeah, you're I, cursed. So I, maybe he, he needs to uh, pick up the mantle. Yeah, I feel like I am <laughs> jinxed. But don't you um, ever want to wear like those little umbrella hats? Oh you know, my god, yes. That they see like in the on the on the fingers uh, and the folks yeah, wearing them yeah, all around with yeah. their corn and their beverages. <laughs> I should I should get something like that to protect me from the rain and then maybe yes. the beverage will make me not care about the fact that's that right, I'm that once yeah. again barbecuing in an absolute downpour. Uh but yeah, no, yeah, it was was it it was Saturday. It was beautiful. Like we had a lot of thunderstorms, a lot of rain, and Saturday was beautiful. And we were like, oh, let's like barbecue and eat outside. Or was it yesterday? I forget. Time is a circle. Uh, But as soon as I was done, uh, as Pascal stepped out to like set the table outside so we could eat outside, it started raining. (laughs) So I don't know. It's been a, I'm sorry. It's been a shitty summer for for weather. Either Mm -hmm. it's been too hot to go outside. Either it's Mm -hmm. been 
uh, too smoggy to go outside because of wildfire, yeah, fire, or it's yeah. been this constant of like, oh yeah, we'll give you enough sunshine just to give you some fucking hope, but it's still gonna rain today. Um, so I haven't done a lot of outdoor activities mm-hmm. because of that. But mm-hmm. uh, I mean, other than that, uh, I found out that I can't be trusted with for a Canadian Tire, whether I go in person or shop online. <laughs> Uh, uh, what is that you you want to buy everything to site what is I, I i was online to buy one thing because <laughs> i was like i'm not gonna do like the roomba where i go to canyon tire mm-hmm. and then walk in the store and see other shit and buy extra shit mm-hmm. and then come home and then walk all the way home with this heavy ass box where I, which i regretted walking all the way home it was too heavy uh so pascal's old tower fan gave up the ghost he's had it for like 20 25 years so I'm like, mm-hmm. cool, now I get to replace it with something that's probably going to last five, because nowadays everything is bullshit. Mm. Uh, so, but I was, I looked at the weight online and I was like, I'm not going to do the same mistake. I'm yeah. not going to go over there, buy extra shit and still carry this box that I, through my yeah. hubris thought I could awkwardly carry mm-hmm. for like six blocks. Because um, it's a good like 20 minute walk for me to the closest Canyon Tire. So I was like, I'm going to order online. And I was like, oh yeah, I need new filters for the Roomba and bags. <laughs> oh, I've been meeting to, I have pots that, I have plants that need to replant, pot, plants that need repotting and I'm buying soils. And anyway, um, you did not carry soil home, a bag no, of soil. No, I did not. I put it in my cart and UPS is going to bring it to me along oh, okay, with the okay, other okay, fucking gosh. 10 things I ordered. <laughs> It's like the Target. It's like, it's like, oh, yeah. You can't, it's like, it's, it's Costco. We were there on Sunday. Exact same thing. I had a list, but you know, there's also this and that. And, you know. Yeah. It's tough. Anyway, uh, we're getting a new fan and a bunch of other shit. Um, so I've learned that it's not, it's not the place's problem. I'm the problem. <laughs> <laughs> You're the problem. It's you. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm the problem. It's me, and yeah. I hope and I like to formally apologize to the UPS delivery person that's going to bring me this giant ass order with home. a bag of soil. Yeah, with, with a bag <laughs> of soil. Like, Who the and hell a, is ordering and a new dirt? fan? It's, it's just like I, I'm surprised they didn't charge me extra for the weight. Like, I'd, if yeah. I were on a flight, they'd be like, "Bitch." Yeah. Well, nonetheless, as soon as it gets there, you know, got a bunch of projects ahead of you. That's one thing. Yeah, and like I've said, I'm off next week. Um, oh, yeah, so right, right. In between my Baldur's Gates session, I'll repot some plants. There you get go. Get some sunshine there you before go. I go back in and ignore the rest of the world because I'm go. in a fantasy world. <laughs> Joelle, what have you been up to this week? Ooh, I was super busy this last week it was a whirlwind um a friend took me out to dinner which was so nice of her and then some other friends were in town so i went out to dinner with them um and oh my gosh what else happened um my boyfriend came into town just for like 28 hours it was kind of crazy he had to do something specifically in minnesota so he like flew all the way up here like spent the night was here for the day and then like left that evening it was <laughs> it was just like a high whiplash because like yeah all right <laughs> see you later um but then something what happened and like i'm and i didn't have many plans this weekend so it was kind of nice because this is the first weekend and like three weekends and I wasn't just totally running around and, and doing all the things. So it was nice to have like a chill, a chill weekend to just kind of like relax and, and hang out. So I went to the gym. I went on a hike. I did some, uh, desperately needed grocery shopping. Um, just like was able to kind of get myself set up. Oh, Mm -hmm. I remember I was going to talk about, I also, Mm-hmm. Spatch cocked a chicken for the first a time. Yes. So what did you do? I I spatch cocked it. What uh-huh. does that mean? It's it like means, when like the full chicken that's flat. Yeah. So oh. like 
Okay. So usually your chicken is like a football. And so yes. this technique is you you cut out the spine of the chicken and then you crack the sternum so it lays flat in the pan or it lays okay. flat like on the grill. So it's okay. supposed to be really good for like um, quicker cooking because usually mm-hmm. a whole bird takes a little bit longer. And then also it's for like a more even cook too because then like – every everything's on the same surface and you only really like and since all the skin and everything's on one side because the other side is just like the inside of the chicken Mm -hmm. um it just makes it a little bit easier to get like the skin really crispy like everywhere and Mm. i tried a new um recipe it was it was like white girl peruvian recipe i when i tried it i'm like this can't be peruvian because i've had a, a little bit of like peruvian food and I was like, this ain't it. <laughs> but I don't know. I did my best. I was just like, this isn't it, but this will be fine. But yeah, I did that. And I don't know. If if you haven't tried it before and you're not afraid to like dissect your food a bit and and kind of get in there, um, I thought it was actually kind of nice because I could put it in a pan. Um, I'd have to put it like in a big roasting pan, um, cooked it in the cast iron, and it cooked faster. And it was like juicier because it didn't have to like cook for so long. Didn't so, dry out. Yeah, it didn't mm-hmm. dry out. And I didn't I like I did marinate it overnight, but usually when I cook a whole bird, I like to put butter, like rub it with butter, put butter in between the skin and the mm-hmm. meat. Um, but I like him to do any of that. So I I don't know, I was like, "Huh, this is <laughs> not bad if you could get over filleting your chicken <laughs> you can buy them that way i just didn't know what the term was oh, but you, you can, can often buy them pre-cut that way yeah. there's oh. a there's a, a i want to say it's a butcher but he is more than that he's got, it's almost like a specialty shop down in mississauga where my sister lives this guy has like phenomenal like um marinated meat and things like that and he has chickens done like that in shrink and like sh- done up in shrink wrap marinated ready to go on the barbecue or in the oven or whatever oh, nice. and they're delicious yeah yeah, that like so yeah, because it all, like it fits on a pan, yeah. and everything. So I would say like if you have a good pair of chick of, of shears, and like you like to cook them anyway, like you should go ahead and try it because it was really easy to do. So nice, love that spatchcocked all weekend, baby. Awesome. Um, I went and saw the Barbie movie Yay. on Saturday. Yay! I still have to go see it. You need to, Catherine. Uh, Joel will probably concur. This movie is made yeah. for us. Yes. Oh, Our yeah. generation, so good. women living in what we have gone through yeah. and the gender role changes and expectations and yeah. mind fuckiness that we deal with. So good. Wasn't so good. So good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So good. Mm-hmm. And like the music is great and uh-huh. how it's shot is great and so much practical effects in it like i mean which is kind of easy because they're supposed to be in a plastic world anyway but like yeah so mm-hmm. well done really mm-hmm. enjoyed it and uh, now uh, i'm watching like all those like youtube videos like from new rock stars kind of going through like here are all the secrets that you missed and the references and stuff yeah <laughs> uh, i'm i'm just mentally ready mm-hmm. for this movie to blow my mind yes. but mm-hmm. also for next halloween to be all barbies and ken's Oh, oh yeah. yeah, and apparently even this weekend, a weekend after, you know, after the movie came out, people were still totally dressed up and all pink and everything. So, yep. Yep. So yeah. And like Ken and Barbie can be absolutely anybody, which is fun. Super fun. Tomorrow is going to be fun though. Um I was invited to go to a Blue Jays game by Xbox. Oh, uh, they've whoa. got a partnership with the Blue Ooh. Jays, so uh they shipped me a really nice jersey that has GOG Leah, my gamer tag on the Aww. back with wow. an Xbox logo on it. Um yeah, it's a nice white dr- jersey and I've got my Xbox baseball hat and I'm going to get geared up and go uh Go out to the ball game. Fun. So I'm excited to see some folks uh, from the community at that event. Should be pretty good. Yeah. It's been, well, we went to a baseball game for Mike's birthday, which was mm-hmm. great, but we hadn't been to one uh, since last year before that. And it's a lot of fun. They've done a lot of renovations on the, uh, on what do they call it now? It's not the Sky Dome anymore. The Roger Center. That's what it's called. It will forever be the Sky Dome. Um, but they did a lot of renovations and kind of unveiled it this year. And it's really nice in there. And apparently there's supposed to be like a 
special one of a kind Xbox there and all this kind of stuff. So I'm uh, I'm looking forward to checking that out tomorrow. Nice. Yeah. Post lots uh, of photos. It, oh yeah, definitely we'll post some photos. Um let's check in with the pod fantasy critic and the community fantasy critic, because there has been some movement, oh. some shifting around. Um I think because a game came out, I jumped up in top of the rankings. Joelle, you're now in second, Kat is in third, Simon is in fourth within the podcast one. Uh, but, you know, that could shift and change at any moment as games release. Um, uh, but, yeah. yeah, the game that <laughs> helped me was Disney Illusion Island gave me an extra five points. So I think that just pu- pushed me up over you, uh, uh, Joelle, because or maybe it was like we were tied, but you had one game like there was like some kind of numbers and how yeah. it worked out. We were really so, close. We were like we're very close. We were very yeah. close. But I can't imagine that the whale that cat has coming out yeah shortly. i'm curious i'm curious to see what the reviews are going to be for baldur's gate 3 i would imagine we'll start hearing that you you can tell i'm this playing week. the long game oh you totally no, are you are smart yeah because yeah. like yep. i got i got baldur's gate coming out next week but mm-hmm. then starfield starfield city skyline sea of stars, sea of stars. stars. uh yeah, yeah i I don't know if Hades 2 is confirmed for, or that might be. It still we, says TBA, so mm. that could be the one that takes me down a bit. But yeah, I'm I'm wondering oh, you're gonna, like, how these games, if they're going to whale me up the way that well, Tears of the Kingdom did. We are, we are all so. really close, though, when you think about it. Like... And though, even though Simon complains that he's way behind, but I mean, any of his games could bump him up. He's at 62 points. Kat, you're at 66. Joelle, you're at 71. And mm-hmm. I'm at 76. Mm-hmm. That could be mm-hmm. one or two games. Yeah. Yeah. That really break, make or break. And uh, neither of my um, my counter picks are there. Kat still has, uh, Joelle still has a counter pack. Kat, you still have two counter picks. Which mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure you're going to get because I don't think either of those two games are coming out this year. So no. you'll probably end up with points, which just means you get zero. You have no chance of losing points. And yeah. then yeah, Simon lost a, only lost five, and his other counter pick got got moved. So like, yeah, but it, a it's lot anybody's of, game well, at this point. Yeah, but a lot of our counter picks are with Simon. He has like four counter pick <laughs> games. <laughs> he does. Know. Everybody else got one. Like I got counter pick for Kerbal Space Program too, and I think that was I think it's me. Yeah. Yeah. I counter picked yeah. you on that. Yeah. And the other one I counter picked was Hollow Knight Silk song, which I think Simon had yeah, uh, he yeah. did have that. Yeah. I so just, but that means zero points. That means you're not losing points too. It's just not an opportunity game. But he's still got a spot. Yeah. He oh, still yeah. pick something. Yeah, he's got he's got Sonic superstars and like we we all have pretty good things coming out yeah because he picked up super yeah super barrier rpg remake and sonic superstars which i think are are very good Good um safe bets Mm -hmm. yeah um yeah but yeah Uh, yeah liza c might give him a good uh, a good boost but yeah the only pickup I guess that would be this week, July 29th. Was you, Kat? You acquired Persona 5 Tactica. So you are playing the one game there. Well, I got one spot left. So Mm -hmm. I think, I think like around September, October, got to pick that last game. Yep. Mm. Yep. Yeah. Be careful though, because a lot of stuff doesn't come out near the end of, uh, the end of the year right so you want to jump on something like you could the thing is is you can rate wait right up to the gun if you know something gets previewed really well jump on it to grab points mm-hmm. right yeah probably a little indie release or something that gets mm. announced or that is close to release or you don't maybe think- something that was tba that gets a release date for uh christmas you don't mm. think there's gonna be like a surprise spoosh coming up i don't know maybe well, we're t- <sighs> We're I mean, past a lot of the events already. Are Gamescom? We past? When is Gamescom? Pa- it must are be we soon. past Gamescom? I feel no, we're not past I think Gamescom. It's Gamescom. It's August. Yeah, it is August 23rd to Sunday, August 27th. There, so there are opportunities there. But I would say, unless Nintendo has some like indie thing or whatever, I don't, I can't see Nintendo 
doing anything right now to talk I'm, about the I'm end of the year. I'm not expecting new announcements. I'm expecting dates on stuff that's TBA. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I guess maybe that's also where I was thinking of, like, maybe not, like, a new game, but there's quite a few larger titles that are, like, non... That don't have numbers don't on them. don't have numbers on them. Yeah, mm-hmm. so it's, I think yeah. it's more, like, there's... I bet there's going to be something. My bet is there'll be something. Yeah, I've been, there's a lot of like indies and farming sim s games and stuff that I've been following on Twitter and I've been trying to keep track of it, plus trying to plan out what I'm playing for the rest of the year and yeah. kind of get an idea of like what I've played this year. Because mm-hmm. we, it's not, it's not easy to just look at one console's uh, uh, kind of like, you know, an Xbox, you can see kind of like, where did I get uh, achievements, all kind of stuff, because we play in so many places. Yeah. So have you guys ever heard of Notion? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So I started a notion oh. to track, to learn how to use it, but then also to track my game that I've been playing and oh. kind of like how I've been doing them and stuff. So I went back and kind of ticked off all the stuff from this year and what I'm waiting for and planning to play. And then what I'm kind of waiting to, to see when it gets dates and stuff. And like, holy smokes, I've played a lot of games the, the, yes. the first half of this year. And there's a lot more to come too. Mm. There really is. We've got a full jam-packed fall. Yeah, we do. Yeah, the the year, like, as far as the schedule, the year is, like, the year's got a lot going for it. I just still think that there's going to be something. Mm-hmm. There's going to be something, yeah, else that that drops right before. Some kind of sneaky sneakiness. Some kind of sneaky. I mean, at least that's what I'm hoping for because that's why I have one slot left. Because we all, everyone has one slot left except for Leah. Mm-hmm. You've you filled your your roster. Yeah, it took me a while though because I had I hadn't picked anything up at a dog's age, so mm-hmm. I just when when the events happened, I started cherry picking which ones I wanted. Yeah. Uh, on the community league, um, a few pivots. Uh, Pat's still at the top. Uh, Joelle, you're in second place. Phoenix is in third. Darth is in fourth. Albay is in fifth. I'm in sixth. Simon is in seventh, and Tim is in eighth. Um, a f- few things let's see did anybody yeah see like the thing in this uh in this group that's kind of wild is we range anywhere from minus 10 which is tim (laughs) uh 14 (laughs) points to 40 points to 45 points two people have 45 points i have 37 joelle you have 65 and pat has 80 and pat still has one, two, three, four, five games to come out. One that's not picked, and a counter, yeah. uh, a counter pick. Pat knew what he was doing yep. this year. Yep. <laughs> it's that's where I'm like, can anybody catch up to you and Pat at this point? Right. Well, I People would have to fill the rosters, which. I, I feel like yeah, a bunch Tim, of. I think Tim gave up. Tim, Tim and Simon officially gave up. I think so. Yeah. Uh, yeah, if they could, you know, drop some of their games, that'd be. That'd I don't be, think they. That'd be cool. Oh, so you pay. Oh my! Yeah. God. Imagine that might imagine, be interesting. Imagine the thought if they would be so generous as to maybe mm-hmm. drop a few of their things. Yeah, well, I mean, like Tim doesn't have too much he would want to drop. I mean, or that would be uh, Starfield is a question mark. Lies of P and Plucky Squire. His football manager twenty twenty four is counterpicked along with Hello Night Silk Skong. Yeah, and. Uh, yeah, everything else he's got has come out. Simon, on the other hand, Armored Core could give him some points. Yep. Um, Hades 2 is counterpicked, and I have a feeling it's not coming out this year. Tekken 8 could give him some points. Mm-hmm. Payday 3 could give him some point. And then he might he wouldn't lose any on Dragon Age. So you never know. Let the let things play out over the next month or so. Yeah. He only has two, and he could gain some some legitimate points there. Yeah, no, I, I think so. Like I feel like for me, I I'm high, but two of my games didn't release, so those were zero. Final Fantasy Seven Rebirth and then mm. uh, Senua's Saga Hellblade Two didn't come out, so those are two that mm-hmm. are gone. Uh, Elden Ring Shadow of the Erd Tree, I don't think, also was coming out. So like, I I feel like I ugh. like I don't have a whole lot of big whoppers. I don't think coming in besides maybe Minico's Night Market. I don't know if Rick of the Necro Dancer is coming out. So a lot of the games that I picked, I was like, 
I think Ripton the Necro Dancer, I think, is supposed to come out this year. Is it? It doesn't have a release date. It just says. Oh, really? Yeah, it just says 2023. But I picked See, it up. That's, that's an exact example of where you said uh, you don't. It doesn't have a date, but it should be this year. Exactly. So, like, you'll get mm-hmm. points on that. Yeah. Right. So, there's God. some of those where it's like it's still like Pokemon Scarlet and Teal. Um, po- sorry, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, the Teal Mask expansion pack, yeah. is set for fall estimated. Yeah. And I was like, well, that will probably be a good pick if it still comes. So, I mean, I feel like a lot That'll of mine, November. a lot of mine that are left, <laughs> like, are very. I just, they're yeah. shot in the dark. So that's where I'm like, I don't feel confident that I'm actually going to stay where I'm at right now. <laughs> mm, but who no, knows? I get that. Who knows? Who knows? And that's the fun of this. Yes, but right. I really enjoy doing it. It's a great thing to follow through over the course of the year. It is. It is fun. And it's and it's also fun, I think, for me to also look at games that I may, maybe have never looked before. I would have missed mm-hmm. announcements for just because they're all kind of right in front of me and Maybe I've done like a little other research on the side because mm. you can go to the homepage and it shows you if you're signed in popular leagues to look at. So mm-hmm. you know, you see what other people are picking. You can scope game-wise. out mm. what IGN is doing. You can scope out what other what um uh um, Xbox. So you can you can scope out other things and see what p- other people are picking up. So yeah, that's cool. Real cool. Speaking of games, let's talk about we're all playing. Catherine, when do you start Baldur's Gate? Are you starting it on the 3rd, on Thursday, and going into the weekend? Are you going to be done Tears of the Kingdom? Well, I'm I'm working Friday, so I think I'm going to start Baldur's Gate on Saturday. Uh, wake uh, up in the morning and be stretch and be like, today is Baldur's Date Gay Day. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I can't talk. Cause, <laughs> yeah, because uh, I still have a lot to do in Tears of the Kingdom. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't think I'm going to get to finish it all. And it's not because I'm putting myself in a necessary timer, because I could wait another week to play Baldur's Gate. It's just I am ready you're done. You're ready. Yeah. What's yeah. the one thing you want to make sure you get finished before you move on to Baldur's Gate 3? Is there one, like, you've obviously finished the story. Is there I, anything else I you're wanted, trying to do? I wanted I wanted to finish the shrines, but How I don't know. How many do you have left? A fair amount, because I still have, like, how much space do I have for hearts? At least it's five not just or hearts, four. It's also your But my wheel. Stam- stamina wheel is already full. Mm. So it's four it's four per hearts. So I got like something like at least 20, 20 shrines. Yeah. To do You can always check when you um yeah. when you're teleporting, it tells you how many you've done. Yeah. So what I've been doing is spending some time in the depths, clearing the depths. Mm-hmm. Um just to have like that finished and then going back up to find some shrines. Mm-hmm. But I think what I'm going to do is probably find a map online to see really how many shrines I have left and where they are. I feel like I finished the sky. Mm-hmm. I don't see what I would have extra. So you want to know, you want to know the trick? How much of the subterrane have you done? Because yeah, so, spoil, spoiler of- warning, spoiler <laughs> warning. Yeah. Spoiler warning. Okay, now, stop have listening you, have you, now. Have you opened everything? Because, yeah, I know that every route is connected yeah. to a shrine. Okay. okay. That's how I've been kind of Clearing like, them? Clearing them, being like finding a route, looking... Because I usually have... Because you can change your map. So if you yes. open your map yep. and you set it to the ground, yep. mm-hmm. when you're in the depth, I also understood that a valley up is a mountain in the depth. Yeah. And yep. vice versa. So a big mountain will be a big valley. I understood mm-hmm. that. And um, sometimes I find a route and there's mm-hmm. no shrine. And I mark it on my upstairs map to be like, mm-hmm. go get a shrine there. Are they Are they all? Are they one for one? One for mm-hmm. one. They are. Okay. I couldn't remember if it was the case. If and they were one for even one in the sky. Even in the sky. And um, I've also, they say that in the loading tips, mm-hmm. that uh. if, if there's uh, not the thing about the roots, but oh. they do say that like if there's an important settlement, 
usually there's something important right below in the depth. So basically, they're like, oh. go underneath Kakariko Village, go underneath Ateno Village, yeah. Yeah, go yeah. underneath Gerudo Town, go underneath, um, you know, yeah. the Shrine of, of of Spirit and the Shrine of Wisdom. And, you know, yeah. and yeah. there you usually find either like abandoned mines with treasures or things very important. Yeah. It's, uh, it's fascinating and very good game mechanic how they connected those together yes. especially since this is built on the map of the previous game right yes. the exactly. way to expand to take something and like evolve on it further i think this is a prime example of how that can effectively be done it's almost like um a link between worlds and how that connected mm-hmm. back mm-hmm. to a link to the past was it that one yeah, yeah. yep yeah like it, so so interesting how they're able to take something and like build upon it and deviate and just like iterations on a theme and of a certain extent, rather than having to start from scratch and keep up, like turn out something brand spanking new and try to blow our minds that way. Right. No, I think, I mean, well, they already did that with breath of the wild. So right. They were, so they were like, well, we'll just keep the good thing going. And like, mm-hmm. like you said, like how smart to just mimic the map. Cause that just had to be that layer and then mm. you clear out, you know, so, so much of the, the data with, like, other things. And then, I don't know, I was just like, yeah, so so smart. So they, they just took on what we loved about it. And then they added a building mechanic, which was genius of them to do so. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah, they just, they did, they knocked out of the park. Like, it was totally. fabulous. Anyway, um, Koroks can't go fuck themselves. Uh, I Yeah. If I see them, I take them. <laughs> Uh, but I've got enough weapons, weapons and wimped space, yeah, uh, to go fuck up uh, Ganon. Um, also, now that I'm late to what are the pose for? Um, mm-hmm. I found out that like you know all these fancy swords that you find, you know, like the the source from like Le- Legend of Zelda one sword from Wind Waker, shit like that. Mm-hmm. Um, you can buy them again if you break them. I was yeah. just. P- I was just buying weapon displays in my house and putting them up because I'm like, they're so pretty. I don't want to use them. They're going to disappear forever. Yeah, and then I realize, yeah. no, they're super easily to replace, especially since Poe's are super easy to farm. Mm-hmm. Um, I was like, I could have been... Anyway, um, so my plan is uh, on Friday night, I'm going to equip all my nice stuff Use it with all my most, uh, my highest attack power items. Mm. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to jump under Hyrule Castle. I'm going to go say hi personally and intimately to Ganondorf. And <laughs> probably I'm going to do the same thing as Simon where he kept all of his best weapons to the end. Mm-hmm. Only to probably just use the Master Sword, but whatever. Yep. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be ready. Um, I don't know if I need. I'm gonna cook up a lot of gloom, gloom resistant food uh, because mm-hmm. I think there's probably. I'm probably gonna need it. I would rather have that. Did uh, you buy the outfit? Armor. Not completely. I don't know if I'll get to it. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. I think, but I did max out the Hyrulean outfit. Cool. Like the basic ass outfit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I got it to the last level of upgrades because it's easy, and I think for like. The average person that's just trying to get to the end of the game. Yeah. Like having 60 armor is more than enough. Yeah, it's a fair chunk. So uh, I don't know, like I barely use the other armors where it's just like you get special attacks when it's hot outside or when it's cold outside. I'm like, if it's hot or cold, I'm wearing this stuff so I don't feel the hot or I don't feel the cold. Like Mm -hmm. I don't Mm -hmm. I don't get when where like this is the kind of effect that matters more like in food for me. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's more situational, mm-hmm. um, and these outfits are like hard to upgrade to. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, Fuck there's off. a lot to upgrade them. It's also a lot. Have you gotten into uh, the the horses stuff with the horse god? Oh yeah, I saw him, and yeah. I saw the mechanic. I completed the quest, and I was like, see you back never, because um, <laughs> <laughs> all you got to do is cook. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but yeah, at the same time, I was like, I just need a horse to have yeah. the 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 whatever it's called the the well you know, i lost the word in english but the, the system yeah just 
I just, and I don't even grab a cart or build a cart. I just grab the Korok, put him straight on it, get on the horse and run. Never ever thought of that. Oh my gosh. He complains the whole way through because it's a bumpy as, a, as hell. But I'm like, <laughs> you know what? Other people are literally crucifying you, so yeah, you're so smart. You could, you could, you could deal with with. I was, with yeah, one. I was speaking with a friend oh at work, God. and he's oh like, gosh. "Yeah, I just got over building." I'm like, "Yeah, you just put him straight on the thing, straight oh on God, that I'm little piece, like that. two chains, piece of wood, little little Korok guy, fused to there with his bag." Yeah, that's, that's just, brilliant. That is pretty brilliant. That's he. Hold that's on like, to your tits, bro. Yeah, that's like what uh, I I'm, I need to do. <laughs> I'm so frustrated with doing those that I just I see one, I put a mark on my thing, and then if I decide later I'm gonna go back and get it, I'll go back and get it if I decide it at some other time. But I'm just like I could be bothered right now from my actual task that I'm on. I went oh, I, I went back to the Zora's domain because I wanted to jump through that chasm. I hadn't been at all yeah. underneath Zora's domain in the depths, and yeah. I had like some fucking X's on my mark to like find some yeah, yeah, old yeah. stuff in that area and whatever um, and by near the chasm I find one of those motherfuckers he's like get me across the river I'm like long ass bridge it is hold on to your tits <laughs> and it's like <laughs> I get across the river and we're yeah. just like on the ledge and there's an extra ledge and my bridge falls so I can't <laughs> like unhook it and get the wood and build the second bridge to go up I'm just kind of like, I notice a little gap in between the rock. So yeah. I get him as high up as I can, lodge him in the rock, climb up. <laughs> then I grab him. <laughs> just literally just like, don't move, bro. Don't move. And then put oh him next God. to his friend. I am so over these motherfuckers. Oh, I know. I, yeah. And it's just the other day I was like, I went back to the first island, the one, the tutorial island. I forget the name. Just because I, I need a jumping point to get one of these little slabs that you take photos of in the sky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I land in an area. I'm like, that's pretty good. I'm going to build a plane. And then I notice there's an actual like little VFX of flowers running around where you have to catch the Korok to get a Korok. And yeah. I was like, ugh, <laughs> fine. Um, <laughs> realizing that like I forgot a Korok on that island. I was just like, fine, give me your seeds. But I already maxed out my weapons inventory, and I think that's pretty good enough. I'm not really going through shields uh, mm -hmm. because I yeah. do the flurry rush so much mm -hmm. that yeah. I'm just like, fuck your parry, fuck your shields. I just put rockets on to go up or sleds on it to go down the mountain quicker. Down. That's all yeah. I do with shields. Yeah. 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 Totally. Sorry. I'm talking at length about. Why is this game well, so good? It's Fuck so, it's so good. <laughs> it's so good. So I good. can't. I can't not talk about this game. It's so amazing. Mm -hmm. You cat. You only got next week, and then you're on a Baller's Gate, and we'll yeah. be hearing that for like ten weeks. So it's perfectly oh, probably fine. living my D and D <laughs> fantasies. Um, another reason I'm pushing to Saturday is I have no idea what to roll. Mm. Oh, you need time. So send me builds, guys. Send me builds. Like if you, you have mean? ideas of what I should play. I have no fucking clue. None. The only thing I know is I'm playing an arcane trickster in my actual factual D&D &D game. Mm -hmm. So no rogues. Okay. Not playing a rogue. No rogues. No rogues. Want to play something mm. different. Mm. But I don't know what. Mm. So now I am. And forget about like race, gender, look. That's going to be like a whim of the moment when I open the character. Whatever you like. Yeah. yeah. Yes, but I gotta think about the I gotta think about the class. That's the like mechanics, yeah. That's where I'm I'm like, ugh, I don't know what to play. I wanna play everything. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. send me send me suggestions. Cool. Joelle, what are you playing? So I just completed the main campaign of Diablo four last oh, good for night. You. Yes, it's my first Diablo game. So first completion of the main campaign. And, um, yeah, it's been so fun. It's just been fun mowing through uh, demons. And um, I thought that it was it was nice because I played with folks that had played um, the previous um, IPs. And so it was nice to, like, come in and not know exactly all the history. But it still, like, makes sense. And it's still an engaging, you know, main main storyline. Um, so it, it was it was fun. And uh, the cutscenes were like phenomenal, like the mm -hmm. really well done cinematics. Also, the sound design was so good. So, like, it's yeah, this game is is fun. I'm I'm hooked, and will probably be a a new Diablo fan uh, going forward. So, 
it is it is fun. So I'm looking forward. Well, you get to like you get you get like ten years between games. Yeah. Just so you so, know. Well, yeah. Expansion packs and seasons so and I'll stuff. Just so there you go. What happened and then start fresh. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but I look. I'm looking forward to starting the season, the new season. Uh, well, it's not new anymore, but I'm a little behind. Um, and I'm gonna try a new character. So I think I did a barbarian just to be like, don't know. I'll just be a barbarian and smash things. And I think I might try a rogue. So we'll see cool. how that goes. Nice. And then I did play on uh, PS Plus. They had a game called Endlings. Extinction lasts forever. And I thought, I'll pick it up. I kind of don't mind, you know, playing, playing some, like, short uh, indie games in between these kind of, like, longer stints. And I will say that this this game was so beautiful. Um, it came out in 2022 was its initial release date from hero beat studios it won the bafta game award for game beyond entertainment and let me tell you it definitely goes beyond entertainment what does that mean it means that if you had a hard time with guardians of the galaxy volume three in the animal scenes you should not play this game Oh boy! <laughs> like emotional roller coaster this ride. This game takes all the punches, twists all the knives. Like <gasps> it is, it is like it is brutal. It is brutal to play. So if you're not one for like it's it's a survival game, third person, three D side scrolling. Uh, you play the role as the last mother fox in a human world. Um, it's post-apocalyptic and you have to survive for 30 days and you have cubs and one of your cubs gets stolen in the beginning of the game and so the whole point of the game is to try to find the cub while keeping your current cubs alive so like absolutely not it is <laughs> yeah i can see where it's going to pull on the heartstrings i don't think i can thank, wear that game. thank you Game devs. Don't. Yeah, I was. Thanks. I, I was, hate it. Like, Joelle, thank you for taking one for the team Jesus. and letting yeah, us know honestly, not to play that I game. Play, <laughs> I was because I know we got talked about, you know, especially with Stray. It was like, well, does the, any kitties were harmed? And you're like, no. And it's like, it's okay. This. Yeah, no, yeah. but there's a moment, right? This, I mean, it's like, this it's is like not Ori bad. and like this is all these bad. games that you play or that you see now where they like introduce you and you're like, why? Why do you have to hurt the cute creature? <laughs> yeah, like it is brutal, and I'll tell you, I I tried my damnedest to keep all of my cubs alive, and I lost one, and I almost was like, I don't want to play this anymore because <laughs> I could, I couldn't keep it alive. It was it was it was it was unpleasant. It's just like this is unpleasant, and it it feels though very like realistic too of just like humans have destroyed everything they're out to kill me i can't find food i'm trying to figure out how to find my cub the ending is i'm not the ending is bad like is bambi bad like the ending is oh shoot like the ending will ruin you <laughs> so oh, like yeah, it's a hard pass on that game yeah. thank you very it's much like, yeah. smokes. so i don't ha- i don't have i don't have the spoons for this no thing. it's no. it's not I wouldn't, I'd recommend, like, if you're interested in indie games. It got 10 out of 10 on Steam. I don't know why people on Steam love to torture themselves, but um, <laughs> it's on, so it's only on PS Plus, though, just for a hot minute, it's going to be gone. But if you're thinking about, if it goes on sale or something, just be forewarned that it's not a faint of heart type of game. But it's it's beautiful. The music is good. It's it's very well done. I can see why it won, but damn. <laughs> But damn. So. Uh, I'm still in the mix on the Tears of the Kingdom. But uh, Kat, did you see? Venba came out today. I just downloaded it this uh, this afternoon after finishing work. I went to Gate Pass. Very unfortunate for them to come out a week before Baldur's Gate because it's probably not going to play that and take that long to play through it. No, no. For me. For me. Oh, yeah. Not for for that game. I mean, they're fine. Uh, They're going to find their audience. Yeah, I also want to play Venba. Yeah, it's yes. just I I thought I I would have be done with Tears of Kingdom and be able to play Venba as a palate cleanser and then mm-hmm. jump into Baldur's Gate, but then mm-hmm. Baldur's Gate comes out three weeks early and yeah. now I'm fucked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to give that a spin. Um, I don't know if I'll get time during the week this week, but definitely on Saturday I'm going to uh, 
I'm going to set time aside to play it because it's usually my prime time to play Mm -hmm. game sessions where I can really sit down and get involved because Mike's working. But yeah, all right. Uh, We've got a few new stories to talk through, so uh, let's get into that. Okay, we're back in time to talk news of the week. Catherine, I feel like we have been talking about this for as long as the Nintendo Switch has been out. (laughs) <laughs> and yet now we have some le- and like it's always been these like is it gonna happen but now it feels like there's some concrete evidence mm. right yeah mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. so right? apparently new nintendo switch coming out in 2024 um so key partners have development kits ahead of a planned launch sources tell uh what's this site video games chronicles I'm like, gold, use your acronyms. I don't know what your name is. VGC. Anyway, uh, according to multiple people with knowledge of Nintendo's next-gen console plans, the company is likely to release new hardware during the second half of 2024. Um, I think there was at one point somebody from Nintendo or somebody close to Nintendo that kind of said if they do, it wouldn't be before May 2024. Um, And according to these sources, it's more like, even further so uh yeah i mean it's still rumors speculations Mm -hmm. i mean if it is planned for 2024 it does make sense in terms of timeline that sdk start to make their way to major partners but usually nintendo is so fucking uptight about leaks yeah yeah but think about the games that we've gotten now and what could potentially be next. Mm-hmm. I feel like it's time, because I'm not going to lie, moments playing Tears of the Kingdom, my console's chugging. Oh, it's rough. Yeah. Oh, yeah. it's chugging. Oh, yeah. And I have like a before day one edition. I'm playing on the review console. <gasps> so like, it is chugging. Yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's going to need a defibrillator so, soon to yeah, pick it back up. So it's, it's time. It is time for it to yep. get yep. an update. Yep. Oh, yeah, we've lo- just been waiting to figure out when that was going to be. Yeah. Uh, a lot of like finance, video game uh, finance bros and industry consultants and whatnot uh, have been saying that it's getting time for Nintendo yep. to have the next hardware and it should be 2024. So it's yeah. kind of like these rumors aligned with a lot of like these number crunching. Um so there's an uh, industry co- consultant, Dr. Sirkan Toto, he said that a 2024 console launch would make sense since it's projected to see double-digit declines in Switch hardwares and software as of this year. Mm-hmm. So a new piece of hardware for 2024 would make sense and would keep those numbers up. And um, a lot of people are speculating that you know, like a Christmas launch would make sense. And if they do do a Christmas launch, that they would have a lot of games for launch as well. Ready for launch. All the stuff, like think about it now, the online store with all the the stuff with the subscription, Mm -hmm. all the stuff that we've been getting now, plus they're doing all these remakes. I could probably, I'm thinking they're thinking about porting them over and then whatever new, like I could see a new Pokemon. Yep. I could see new Mario. I could see Nintendo uh, Zelda DLC. Like, yep. if I was a betting woman, which obviously we are, considering we're doing that fantasy critic, um, I would think, thinking about how the last console was kind of revealed, I would think potentially f- tail end of February, beginning of March, we have an announcement yeah. saying that it's incoming. It'd probably be around Odyssey something. If it's going to be around yeah. a game. because yeah. we're- No, no, I mean, like, we, an- we get an announcement end of february beginning of march yeah yeah yeah. but i'm saying saying yeah, that yeah. it's coming out with with a game yeah. like an yeah, yeah at the level of odyssey yeah. for, for a mario yeah, yeah. game well, it's not going to be zelda because we just no. had zelda we just had, <laughs> it. had it and yeah. think about yeah. um the when the last console came out we got that in march yep it was announced in the fall yep so mm-hmm. like i can see the same trajectory the question mark would be and i do think that announcing it um announcing it during 
what would be the E3 period, like the busiest time of the year, would be a better time for them to do some show off, like announce the new console, announce a game, show it off more midway through the year, have everybody clamoring for it yep. in uh, in October. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, like that. yeah, that makes sense. For, that makes for sense. holiday for holiday purchasing, right? Yeah. And I would I would give it a little bit of buffer time in between, like I wouldn't do it like right up around Black Friday. I would do it before that with enough time for them to restock with the intention to sell over Christmas. Yeah, yeah with the promise of a next gen uh, Mario. Yep. yep. I think Odyssey. that would be intelligent. Very intelligent. It's interesting too because like there's also a story going around about uh, the gentleman uh, Sakurai that does uh, Smash Brothers. He's trying to figure out what's going on next or something like that and saying that he would be open to work. I don't know. It's, it was weird how it was phrased. It's not like he's closed off from the idea, but at the same time, I think he's not clamoring. He doesn't know what the next thing would be for Smash Brothers. Mm-hmm. I have a feeling they could do something there. Yeah. You know, it's mm-hmm. been a while since Smash came out. Yep. Um, you know, we could get the Pokemon that we wanted the last one to be. The last one had everything we needed. It just wasn't graphically capable of supporting it in the way that they yeah. Yeah. wanted it to, yeah. right? So maybe there's a there's potential there, right? Because I mean, last year we got two Pokemon games in one year, and now we're just getting the DLC. So maybe there's another team working on whatever this is, right? There's yeah. there's so much potential. Yeah, there. I just want to see a firm upgrade in hardware. Honestly, yeah, like I I mm-hmm. need to see because I so far the rumor is that it could launch with an LCD screen instead of an OLED to bring down costs. But I kind of feel like if you're competing with tablets and phones and mm-hmm. whatever project Q for X for PlayStation is coming, mm-hmm. like, I don't know what kind of screen that's going to be, but like y- you, I-, I feel like you should have an OLED option for folks that mm. want that dynamic graphic experience even if it is on a nintendo like that's fine you know you can at me like oh it's nintendo graphics whatever but if i want to if i want to have it like i should have that option and so i i guess you know uh i would i would hope that the storage would be better just like the guts of it it really has got to be an upgrade because yeah this thing is yeah. it's so it can't run the games it's trying no, to release it can't, that's the problem yeah. it, it yeah. you know it that that's a problem and and develop their own developers are are you know, having problems making it. It's like the end when when Zelda Breath of the Wild came out on um, Wii U. Wii mm-hmm. U, it chugged. It needed the Switch, and now this one is starting to feel yeah. and even the, the Switch technical pain. Chugged. Yeah, the Switch. The Switch is glitchy yeah. With when there was a lot going yeah. on, a lot of like like I mean, the yeah. rain plus the leaves plus the grass yeah. plus some kind the of particle rates. action plus yeah. the lightning, and you're just yeah. like, oh my god, the frames she are a dropping. They did. A lot of like good work in Tears of the Kingdom, where yeah. a lot of these issues were fixed. I don't know how they did it, but they did it. But also, mm-hmm. Tears of the Kingdom, Kakariko Village. Every Ugh, time yeah. I walk in, everything to a halt. No frame rates. Yeah, nothing. <laughs> I'm now in a claymation movie. Yeah. I am like, <laughs> yeah. And you gotta go often to show some dude photos of slates. Yeah. yeah. Also, there's a question. I have a question for you afterwards, which is very, definitely spoiler cast of sending, showing pictures of slates, and I don't know what I, I'm doing, I miss, so I have I questions for you that afterwards. I missed this quest, so I'm totally, I'll just <laughs> learn. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm, I have that mission, and I tried to do something, and I'm, I'm stuck, so definitely have questions for Kat afterwards. But yeah, I mean, I, we're, we're due. It's seven years. It's time for new console. They're not competing with the xbox and playstation no. so yeah. why not drop something new yeah. and especially if they're not seeing people buy console they need people buy co- new consoles yeah i mean i i want a new console i'll just be mad if it's like here's like a little baby upgrade it's like no no like you, it needs like to be legitimate need to, yeah you need to to give yeah. me something here man yeah joel what is the progression now on this microsoft purchasing activision blizzard deal yeah any updates well there's there's a little bit there's a little bit of an update um you know things aren't quite finalized yet but ign uh gave us a little bit of a article this morning saying that 
Microsoft has sent its final submission to the Competition and Markets Authority, or CMA, in the UK uh, to buy out um, Activision Blizzard, and they are kind of putting it as in the end game, quote unquote. And so um, <clears throat> the deal obviously has gone through in the US and for the EU. So now we're just waiting on the UK. Um, <clears throat> Microsoft uh, submission, uh, ra- you know, they raise concerns around cloud gaming and what would that mean for cloud gamers and who would own what. Um, so they're currently negotiating these proposals and changing some things um, to get that licensing deal um, ideal for the cloud. And CMA is the last obstacle Microsoft has to navigate in order to get the deal signed. Um, Which means that if their proposal to the CMA um, is declined, then they're going to have to extend this farther or drop it. So it just kind of seems like there's going to be some interesting things to watch, at least on this front going forward. Um, We'll just kind of have to see. Um, The company... So, sorry, uh, CMA warned earlier in July that Microsoft could be hit with a whole new merger investigation when it submits its new proposal, but the company is seemingly confident the deal will finally go through by October 18th. So, it's going to be about 18 months to go from the initial announcement back in January. So, um, Hopefully they'll get their decision and final, final decision by August 29th. So we still they got about a month to get this all hammered wait. out and squared away. Otherwise, the UK will be out of luck. Yeah, we will wait and see. This seems like the longest, the longest acquisition, acquisition ever. I mean, it's the most expensive one in tech history. Yeah. So are we are we surprised? No. <laughs> I mean, we were talking about playing the long game. Yep. That is a long game. Mm-hmm. Mm. And considering we're talking about Activision, we might as well have a story about Call of Duty, right? <laughs> hey, we're such Call of Duty fans. We're not. I know. Um, <laughs> nothing <laughs> we against don't the fran- play Call of Duty. <laughs> like, nothing against the franchise. I just don't like to play a lot of gun games. And Simon plays other gun games than this one. Mm-hmm. Uh, so. Lara Croft, Nicki Minaj, Snoop Dogg, and 21 Savage are coming to Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone. So, yeah. <laughs> skins. Microtransactions. Uh, All the skins. I don't understand how she can hold up her gun. W- won't the boobies? Don't the boobies get in the way? You know, For Nicki Minaj? Yeah. I, I think so- they took some creative liberties. Uh, I think they took a lot of... Uh, Creative liberties. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Snoop Dogg and Nicki Minaj are coming to Modern Warfare. Yeah. Two. Which one's coming to Warzone? Is it the Lara Croft going to Warzone? Or is it Modern Warfare is Warzone? Of- Am I- Warzone. Modern Warfare is War- Warzone. Is their free to play? Co- their online. You know, there it's it's their uh, Grand Theft Auto Five online. Okay, sorry, I'm I got confused yeah, right. with, <laughs> with their skews All the and names. their editions. Uh, anyway, uh, Call of Duty. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm pleasantly surprised with some of these models. I think Snoop Dogg looks legit. Yeah, it I looks think- like Snoop. Nikki sort of looks like Cardi B or maybe yeah. it's just the screenshot they gave. It does not look like Nicki Minaj no. to me. Not n- nothing about it looks like Nicki Minaj. Now, obviously, yeah, it could be the screenshot and the angle that we're getting. But yeah. like, honestly, I don't think it looks like Nicki Minaj. Do you think, though, the reason that because it doesn't have her tattoos and stuff, is this for like licensing purposes? Mm. No, I don't think, like, yeah, tattoos could definitely have something in it. There are, like, a reason why they don't put certain tattoos because of the the, the artist's rights and whatever. Oh. But, like, I'm talking about her face shape, her hair, yeah. her body type. Now, we're only seeing from, like, hip up. She's kind of blocked by the fact that she's the gun in front of her, like you had mentioned, all that kind of yeah. stuff. 
But her face doesn't look like Nicki Minaj. No. But she would have to give permission, right? Nicki Minaj. Oh, of course yeah, she did. And you know she's no, no, making no, this cash. Is all, yeah. This is all legit. I just, she this obviously is all legit. just doesn't they, care. <laughs> they made they made deals with uh, with these rappers. Um, and I guess 21 Savage hasn't been revealed yet because his skin is a silhouette. Yeah. I think article. she hasn't been revealed yet. I guess they're revealing later this week. Apparently, Snoop is coming back to Call of Duty. Yeah, I feel like I that's he was something in it once we've before. Seen. Yeah, the, yeah, he's he's returning. The dog is coming back. Doggy dog. Yeah, I'm looking at pictures of Nicki Minaj now. I still don't <laughs> feel like it looks like her. Her face shape is wrong. <laughs> that's what's bugging me right now. Her face shape is wrong. Yeah, it's. I and her make her makeup's weird. Her, her makeup That's is wrong too. She she always have makeup. those really extreme winged eyeliner yes. with like nothing under yes. and like yeah, like I'm I'm looking at a, like in like Google images of Nicki Minaj and I don't think and Listen. actually there's a picture of of her up like an Engadget article up next to it like that picture from from thing and I still don't think it looks like her. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean historically, <laughs> the game industry has does done women dirty. In all the ways, <laughs> including in game with 3D models where they get the hair and the makeup wrong yeah. so many times where you wonder, like, do you even have women on your team? Do you listen to them when they yeah, give you that's feedback? A whole, I imagine there is, but yeah. So, uh, or is it just because, like, I, I don't know what tw 21 Savage Skins looks like if it looks exactly like him, yeah, but I also feel like Snoop is quite recognizable, but he also has such a unique face structure. He's a very unique, distinct look. Yeah. Yeah. So He's, like, it's easier to like, you see a rendition of Snoop, you know, it's Snoop. Yeah. Even if they got like stuff wrong, it's unmistakably Snoop. I feel like somebody who has finer features like Nicki Minaj, it might be harder to get. Also, I don't know like how much of it was, Maybe edited by her staff. Maybe. To make her look a certain way. Like, I don't know. I'm, I'm. It's her jawline this, I, I, in this I, screenshot. I just, it's her jawline. It's driving me bananas. It does not look like her. I just her. think, like, if you didn't know who Nicki Minaj is, like, you wouldn't. You would just think this is, like, a cool, sexy woman. Yeah. In pink to play you. If I you had seen it, I wouldn't Barbie. have said it was. I wouldn't have thought I would be like Cat. I would have thought this was some other rapper like Cardi B. Like I, it doesn't look. And Nikki is a very distinct look too. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah it's, I, I, it's weird. Yeah. I don't know if it's because like maybe because of these models they don't want to make her as curvy as Nicki Minaj and they like slimmed her face for for the for like. I don't know, UV and pur purchases, purposes and clipping purposes and polygon count. I don't know. But yeah, um, well, her eye, I like just her foreheads weird and her eyebrows are weird. Her eye, her, hair, her eye shape isn't hair. right. Like her. It could be the angle. It could have been the angle be. that they, they, sh yeah. they shot this at. But yeah, I think the eye shape is really deterred by the fact that usually she has that extreme. Like her eyes look like anime eyes because yes. she always has that really extreme black winged eyeliner. Mm hmm. I'm looking and that doesn't look like at it. a photo of like Cardi B. It looks more like Cardi B. <laughs> I know. Uh, and Nicki Minaj is a badass too. Like she is yeah. such a cool look. Oh and yeah. Yeah. Like I, I wish it looked more like her. But cool that they're putting. Yeah. Yep. Putting women in the yep, game can't. more often. Mm -hmm. It's interesting though because like I was listening to kind of funny and they were talking about this story and this the. The marketing spin around it is the tie to it being the 50th and uh, 50 years of hip hop, the anniversary, mm -hmm. which is out. And I know this because stuff for working, whatever. Mm -hmm. And I just thought it was weird that they threw Lara Croft in there just like randomly. Like it makes sense. Snoop, Nikki, 21 Savage. Mm. Like that makes sense. Why is Lara Croft there? Yeah, <laughs> I know. And like, when did they sign this licensing deal? And I guess they're stuck with it. Um, yeah, and they did not release an image with La of Lara Croft. No, and then yeah, and there was just a tease of Twenty One Savages operator. Um, weird call. It does. I just like. Is it true that she's the first female operator in COD? Really? That's what? No. No, is that not true? 
when you, there's isn't it other. that you make your character and you can choose your gender? Lara Croft will arrive in, as an operator First bundle in the store mid season. Female operator. Maybe. Oh, as in first, like, a uh, character. Brand, like Branded. an actual Branded. image yeah, of somebody. Yeah. yeah. Th- wow. Okay. Wow. I think I think that's true. Crazy. Shows how much we know about Call of Duty. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know. It's like, uh, yeah. So, well, um, y- which, who, where is this? USA Today uh, mm-hmm. you know, says, yeah, is a. Uh, First female operator called out for Call of Duty. So, I mean, I mean, it's it's great. Like, represent how you're going to represent. I just wish it looked more like her. But yeah, Huff yeah. Post. Nicki Minaj makes history as first female celebrity playable character in Call of Duty. Yep. First female celebrity. First female celebrity player. Yeah, because you can make you can make female characters in there, and maybe Lara Croft is part of there. But it's a celebrity first, like representation of a human. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so. Yep. My question is, because obviously I don't play this game, when did Call of Duty became Fortnite in terms of like <laughs> Well, I mean, skins? they've been doing, well, I guess once they started Warzone, because like they have other celebrities in there, including Lionel Messi and Kevin Durant. Oh, okay. Like, they've been do- yeah, they've been doing it for a bit, but I don't think they've really, and they recently did a uh, session with the characters from The Boys. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, superhero movie yep. from, uh, from or superhero, superhero TV show from Prime. Uh, Amazon Prime. Yep fantastic also films in toronto and i ran i was like on the set one day by accident because they did it at work (laughs) nice but yeah i mean they've been they've been doing a bit but i guess they've kind of jumped on it when they started warzone yeah i i get when it comes to skins in a gun Mm -hmm. game Mm -hmm. yeah i get fictional characters Mm -hmm. like i know like Geralt in fortnite is weird or spider-man in fortnite is weird with a gun I get it, whatever. Um, As a celebrity, I'm not sure. Like, I'm looking at these photos of Snoop and, you know, like, Nicki Minaj and whatnot holding a big, like, assault rifle and considering, like, the history of America with guns. I'm I'm not sure I would (laughs) like my likeness in a... In a game, walking around, shooting people down and teabagging them. Yeah, what if they, they were going to pay you, though, like oodles and oodles of millions of dollars to do it again? Because you have to remember, Probably. as far back as America is with her love of guns, she also loves the money and the capital. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. No, I'm I'm like, I'm no hate or no shame. No, I know. But this is this is me, like, my personally, like, seeing actual people in a gun game. Like as their celebrity selves, not as like she probably uh, plays a character, a huh? She probably plays Call of Duty. I think yeah. Snoop does. Snoop yeah. does yeah, for Snoop sure. Does. I yeah, know yeah. that. Messi's character looks like him. I'm gonna see what car- uh, Kevin Durant's character. How close it is? I I I don't know. I'm <laughs> I'm uncomfortable at the idea of celebrities walking around with guns. <laughs> In game uh-uh. and out of game, that's fair. I guess. That's fair. That's totally that's fair. fair. Uh, like, where? What was Kevin? At least it's Kevin a game. Kevin Durant looks like him. At least it's a war game, though. At least it's not like a a game not yeah. not involving firearms. <laughs> and then mm-hmm. you you have people in firearms, but I mean, it's uh, there's a part of me isn't super mad that the gaming community is there's more crossover happening. Um, mm-hmm. And it's coming at a great a great pace. And, you know, you have the shows that are coming out, which are great. The movies that are coming out, which is great. It's like we're finally entering into this. People are starting to understand the zeitgeist of gaming and the deep nostalgia and cold it has on people. So, I mean, and, you know, and if, if you're chilling in COD and listening anyway, like, I mean, I don't know. I think this is... I, I am I, on the one hand, like I also under understand like your point, cat. But then I also think like it's it's a good start, no, and, and they're already and they're and they're starting to include women, and so like that's good. So it's like yeah. can we keep can we keep representation going even with that with the COD crowd? Not mm-hmm. nothing against the COD crowd. I'm just saying that Call of Duty when you're when you're out there, like when I was out there on the dating websites, and I said I was a gamer. 
there was a lot of people that trying to screen me and there's oh well, do you play call of duty and i'm like no they're like okay good so i'm just like i'm just saying there's reputation for call of duty uh, players out there uh, yeah <laughs> it's, I, I think a lot of online communities don't yes. have the best of reputations no. um mm. but yeah my point is it's like you know games are a fantasy and mm -hmm. yeah. how i am okay with a lot of gun games is knowing it's a fantasy like i much rather prefer like almost cartoonish games like um fortnite yeah when it comes to that and i understand that people who shoot at each other on call of duty they don't do it with hatred they do it like as an objective they're shooting pixels but adding to that the uncanny valley of having like fucking snoop dog mm -hmm. snipe me with his like 420 blaze at a uh, sniper rifle <laughs> is just adds a different layer of what the fuck are we doing for money man i um, cannot figure if uh figure out if Mickey Minaj plays Call of Duty or not. I am on uh, page <laughs> nine of Google results and I'm still getting the same. Uh, I don't think same she... Call of Duty. I have a feeling she does. I feel like I've heard something about that before, but I, you never know. I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised if she, she games. I don't know if she specifically plays Call of Duty. Maybe. I, I wouldn't surprise me at this yeah. point. Like now that I know that Snoop Dogg is a well-versed and deeply involved hockey fan mm -hmm. nothing surprises me <laughs> yep. try to buy the auto or buy part of a group to buy the auto to senators yeah. yeah i just like the first time i saw him on i forget i think it was hockey night in canada or espn yeah. or something yeah but like he knew the he knew like he, knows he knew every player he knows his shit yeah. and i was just like i'm just sorry bud because hockey is not really big outside of canada to begin with Mm -hmm. much less like in the hip-hop community like he mm -hmm. must be one of the only rappers that's like no oh, man are you on this hockey shit bro <laughs> yeah like, i bet you there are a few but yeah it's uh it's definitely more in the midwest for sure yeah it's but, growing yeah. a bit yeah. it's growing more than it than it was before but yeah i mean like hockey is not does not have the same stance as like basketball or baseball right or soccer no. or, no. or football football or football football or football, <laughs> Foot football, or football. yeah either. football or football American yeah. football so, or so football. I, I, I'm always deeply surprised when a non-Canadian shows up and he's like, this hockey shit is great. And I'm just like, come on in. <laughs> come on in. We got maple syrup. The water syrup. is icy. <laughs> Sit down. We love it. We love it. We love it. All right, folks, that pretty much closes out the show this week. As always, I invite you to check out the show notes on girlsongames.ca for links to all the stories mentioned in this episode. Thank you, Catherine, for pulling that together each and every week. I encourage you, dear listener, to rate and review our podcast if you have the power to do so on the podcast platform where you're consuming this content. Why? It helps with the ratings, pushes us up is so that people can discover us. And of course, we use the comments to help us build our show. So much appreciated for you doing that. Uh, I'd like to also thank the crew for being on the panel with me this week. And this is the moment where I get them to shout out their social media handles so you can follow them everywhere and anywhere online. Catherine, where can people find you, my dear? I am CSDSBNS. Says to be on uh, Twitter or X, whatever it's called, Instagram, Threads. Uh, but I mostly hang out in the Girls on Games Discord. Join the Discord and help me pick a Baldur's Gate three class. Thank you. There you go. There you go. Service announcement. Catherine, Catherine needs help. Joelle, where can people find you? People my can find me on Instagram at Joelle Lauren eighty seven and on X. <laughs> Sounds so stupid. The app actually changed for me when yes. I did the update today too. Uh, it's now same, X same. with an X. It's it's weird. weird. I hate it. <laughs> it's weird. I hate it. Uh, uh, find me there at uh, gamer underscore comfy, but all day every day in the girls on games Discord. Please come and say hi. Help cat out. You know, commerce with your fellow gamers who love all this <laughs> stuff. It's a good time. No min-maxing, though. I'm not a min-maxer. I just want to have a good time. And I'm Leah Jewer on most social media platforms. But of course, you want to know everything there is to know about Girls on Games. You can track us down at The Girls on Games on X and Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> just Girls on Games on Instagram and Threads. I feel like I need to update a freaking document now because it says all the old names and not the new stuff. 
Uh, but honestly, you can really catch us at discord.me slash girls on games to continue this lovely convo and more. And of course, if you ever need to know anything at all, you can track it down at our website. That is girls on games.ca. Thank you, Kat. Thank you, Joelle. It's been another lovely week in video games and there's lots to play. And uh, also it's nice outside. So uh, go out and touch grass and maybe bring a mobile game or a handheld out there with you. Along play with an play umbrella, the switch so outside see. in the grass. Yep. Yeah. With an umbrella so you can actually see what's happening. All right. Talk to y'all later. Bye. 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 Bye.